Hello, my name is Helen Rennie and today we're going to deglaze a pan of the searing stick and make a simple but fabulous pan sauce. A pan sauce can be made after searing any meat or poultry, but you don't want to apply this technique after searing seafood or fish. The sauce will amplify the aroma of your protein. If it is super beefy or porky, that's good. If it is super fishy, that is not so good. It all starts with the correct choice of pan, which is stainless steel. It is non-reactive, so you can use acidic ingredients in it, like wine. It also gives you plenty of brown bits to deglaze when you're done searing. An enamel-coated cast iron pan is another option. I only have a Dutch oven of this type, not a skillet, but you get the idea. A Teflon pan won't give you any brown bits to deglaze, since nothing sticks. A seasoned cast iron pan, the type that's black with no enamel coating, is not a good choice either. Acidic ingredients like wine will react with the metal of the pan, making them taste weird, and boiling any liquids, but particularly acidic liquids, in a cast iron pan is not a good idea because it will destroy its non-stick coating. To deglaze the pan, we'll need enough liquid for one-third of an inch layer on the bottom of the skillet. For a 10-inch skillet, this will take about one cup of liquid. The exact amount and proportion of stock to wine is not crucial, so feel free to just eyeball it. But keep in mind that you want way more stock than wine, or your sauce will be too sour. I usually use one quarter cup wine to three quarters of a cup of stock. When the meat comes out of the pan, you'll have all of these flavor-packed brown bits on the bottom of the skillet that will be begging to be used. Pour any remaining grease out of the skillet and wipe the lip. Wait 30 seconds or so for the pan to cool off and pour in your wine and stock. Crank up the heat and boil it down until it turns syrupy. While our sauce is reducing, let's talk about the choices of stock and wine. First, the bad news, my friends. You can't use anything out of a box or can here. It doesn't have the flavor or the gelatinous quality of homemade stock. It also has salt, even the low sodium types do. And when you boil them down, they become too salty. Yeah, so unfortunately, junk boils down to junk. Now, the good news. You don't need fresh stock to make a sauce. Frozen will taste just as good. And you don't even need different stocks for different proteins. So, sure, in ideal world, you would use lamb stock for your lamb dishes and your beef stock for your beef dishes. But the brown chicken stock will work for pretty much everything. That is chicken stock made from roasted chicken. It has a dark brown color and deep roasted flavor. Once in a while, I scrape the bottom of the skillet with a flat wooden spoon to pick up the brown bits. A whisk works well too. Your wine doesn't need to be anything special or expensive. When you start boiling it, all the interesting aromas will evaporate anyway. For whites, I use Sauvignon Blanc from Trader Joe's. Uh, you can use whatever you want as long as it's not too oaky. For reds, I like to use Pinot Noir or Syrah blends like Côte d'Oron from the south of France. You can use whatever you want as long as they are not too tannic like Cabernet. Tannin in wine tends to give sauces a metallic aftertaste that I personally find unpleasant. Let's see how our sauce is doing. The reason we know that we're almost there is that the sauce has the consistency of hot maple syrup when I swirl the pan. This took about five minutes and I have roughly one third of the original liquid left by this point. You can serve it as is or swirl in a bit of butter. For a 10-inch skillet, I need about a teaspoon or two. Take your pan off the heat, add the butter and whisk vigorously to emulsify it into the sauce. If you just let it melt, it will make the sauce greasy. But if you give it a good workout with a whisk, you'll get a silky, glossy sauce. Oh, look at this. Isn't this lovely? Serve immediately on warm plates to prevent your sauce from congealing. I use a rubber spatula to get it out of the skillet to make sure I get every last little bit of it. 
People are often surprised that there isn't a whole lot of sauce left in the skillet after it's done reducing. But this sauce is so intense, it's the essence of meat itself, so a little goes a very long way. Mm. Mm. And by the way, since all the stuff that was stuck to the bottom of the skillet is now gone, washing it will be a piece of cake. From Helen's Kitchen in Boston, happy cooking and baking to you!